In today's video, we're going to solve the double pendulum in Python using SymPy and then NumPy. So in the previous video, we saw how to deal with a simple pendulum in Python with no pen and paper. And today we're going to look at the double pendulum, which is a bit more complex because there are two degrees of freedom. So there's two angles our pendulum can use to swing. But actually the method we're going to use is going to be completely the same than in the last video. So if you haven't seen it, I really recommend you go check out my simple pendulum video because I explain everything in detail. And today we'll be going a bit quicker so we can have more fun with the animation and all these other things. So we've got our diagram of our double pendulum over there. And we see that if we use uh, basic trigonometry, we can actually find the X and Y coordinates of each of these masses. And so they're written down there. And then once we've got these coordinates, we can find the kinetic energy of our system. So it's just going to be half m1 v1 squared plus half m2 v2 squared. And then we find the potential energy. And this allows us to construct the Lagrangian for the system. And once we have the Lagrangian, we can find the equations of motion for each of the uh, thetas. And that's literally all we need um, to solve uh, this system in Python. So uh, we can start right now. So we've got our imports in this first block. So we have numpy, simpy, matplotlib, uh, odin from scipy to solve the uh, differential equations. Then we have uh, a bunch of packages that allow us to uh, do some nice animations in our notebook. So again, I've used the same method than the previous time. So I've started by creating a, a double pendulum class. So this time, when we initialize our class, we have a bunch of different uh, attributes. We have the time, so this is the range of times for which we want to solve the pendulum. Then we have the two masses of the two uh, bobs that are swinging, and we have the length of the two different rods. Then we just have g, which is the acceleration uh, on Earth. And then we have the initial conditions, so the initial starting angles and the initial starting velocity for both of the masses. And then we can write a function that we're going to call solve self. And so remember, we're going to use the same method than last time. So first we find the equations of motion using SymPy, and then we convert them into Python functions that can be evaluated and we solve them with um, SciPy's odint. So there we go, we've got our symbols for the masses, length and time. There we've got our symbols for theta1, theta2, which are functions of time, so SymPy.function. And then we have the velocities, so theta dot and theta double dot for the accelerations. So let's just quickly um, display something there. So let's just display so theta one, just to check that everything's working. And then I'll just initialize my pendulum. So I've already done this. So this is the time and these are the uh, pendulum's attributes. And so we'll just call double uh, pendulum dot solve. And we'll see what it gives. So let's just run this before. And, oh, did I not run my import? Sorry. There we go. And we just call this. And yeah, we see it correctly displays uh, theta of t. So the next step is to define x1, y1, and x2, and y2, which are the coordinates we'll use. Um, so we just said that x1 was going to be sympy.cosine, uh, sorry, sympy.sine uh, theta1. And, um, sorry, so x1, y1, and this y1 is just going to be, so I have to multiply this by L, so it's going to be L1, then it's going to be minus L1 times sympy dot cosine um, theta1, and then we have um, x2, y2, so x2 is just x1 plus sympy dot sine, uh, this one is going to be theta2, and y2 is y1 minus l2. Sorry, I have to multiply this by l2 again. l2 times simpy dot cosine um, theta2. So now that we've got our x's and y's, we can find the kinetic energy. <clears throat> so actually, the, kin the kinetic energy is, remember, half mv squared for both masses, right? So we'll just say that, so kinetic, so we'll just say that v1 squared is just going to be um, x1 dot differentiated with respect to time squared plus x2, sorry, so it's y1 differentiated with respect to time squared. So this is the velocity squared. And um, same thing, so v2 squared is going to be the same thing, but we're just going to replace it with x2 and y2. 
So we just replace all the ones with the twos. There we go. And so now we can actually build our kinetic energy. So we'll call it T and it's just going to be simpi.rational. So one half times M1 times V1 squared plus just copy exactly the same and just change every one with a two. So M2 times V2 squared. And let's just display our kinetic energy to confirm everything's correct. So there we go. Yeah, maybe we could also just add a dot simplify. So this is just a function that allows you to simplify the outputs. So it's a bit neater, it's easier to uh, read. And so yeah, there we go. So that does, actually that's the correct um, kinetic energy because I remember it. Um, okay, now we need the potential energy. So potential. So it's just going to be V equals mass one times G times tight plus mass two times G times tight. And then the Lagrangian. So we we'll just say that L equals T minus V. And now that we've got the Lagrangian, we can start getting our equations of motion. So remember, the equations of motion for theta 1 and theta 2 are these ones. So since we're going to be doing this twice, let's just write a function that takes in, takes in a Lagrangian, uh, some angle theta and its derivative with respect to time, so the velocity, and returns this expression. So we'll call this so equations. So we'll call this def get equations. L theta and D theta. So it takes in these inputs. And so the right hand side is just going to be L dot diff with date with, with respect to theta. So DL by D theta. And the left hand side, so I'll just skip another line. Left hand side is going to be simpi dot differentiate L dot diff with respect to D theta, so the velocity, all differentiated with respect to time. So this is just a way of writing this in simpi. Right, we're differentiating dl by d theta 1, all differentiated with respect to time. So we've got this, and it's just going to return the right hand side minus the left hand side. And we'll call this for each um, angle. So we'll, now we'll say that e1 equals get uh, x of l uh, theta 1 d theta 1. And we'll say that E2 equals get equations. So exactly the same thing, but for theta 2 and D theta 2. There we go. Like that. And um, so now we've got our equations. We need to write them of the form theta double dot equals something. So that uh, our numerical solver will give us theta and theta dot. So what we have to do is we have to say that the accelerations are equal to simpi.solve. So we want to solve E1 and E2. So basically what we're doing is we want to rearrange our equations. So we get one line saying acceleration. So theta one double dot equals something and theta two double dot equals something. So we want to rearrange our equations equals E1, E2. And we're solving it for dd theta 1, dd theta 2, and um, we'll just say that our e1 is just going to be, sorry, I'll just call this excels, so it's quicker, excels um, dd theta 1, and we have our e2 is just going to be the same, but for, sorry, E2 is just going to be the same but for theta 2. So E2 equals this. And then let's just display E1, for example, dot simplify. So let's just run this and see what it gives us. Yeah, so we get this really complicated uh, looking expression. And actually that's that tells us that theta 1 double dot equals this. And let me just show you something else before we carry on. Why we're able to do this. So if I just run this up again and show you this, 
We're able to do this because these equations are linear in theta double dot, right? There's no theta double dot squared, there's no sine theta double dot, and that's why we're able to rearrange them for two equations for both of the accelerations. So that's literally what we're doing. And we're then solving, so that expression I showed you is what we're solving for, we're gonna solve for with um, OD int. So it was, uh, yeah, this one. We're solving this uh, expression with OD int. And so remember, if you've watched my previous video, the way we actually solve this um, uh, differential equation for the simple pendulum is by separating the ODE into two ODE. So now we've got two ODEs, we've got one for theta one and one for theta two. So we're gonna have four different differential equations. And we do this by letting uh, u equals theta one dot and u two equals theta two dot. And so then we define a state vector that we call x. So it's theta one u one, theta two u two, such that dx by dt equals our equation. So the first entry is gonna be u one, the second entry is gonna be this, because this is du1 by dt, etc., etc. So now what we have to do is we have to uh, convert all of these expressions into Python functions that can be uh, evaluated. So what we'll say is that d theta1 dt numerical is just going to be um, simpy.lambdify. So we're, we're lambdifying with respect to theta one, d theta one. So this just returns the velocity d theta one or u, u one. Then we'll have d u one dt numerical. So this is the acceleration. So this is theta double dot, theta one double dot. So simpy dot lambdify. So we have a bunch of arguments. We have uh, g m l one l two, uh, sorry, g m one m2 l1 l2 theta1 theta2 d theta1 and d theta2 and we're lambdifying e1 and so then we just do the same thing for theta2 so we have d theta2 dt numerical is going to be just d theta2 by dt and then we have d u2 by dt numerical is e2 lambdafied. So it's the same thing, except here we're gonna call it on e2. And now that we've got this, we can write a function that takes in x and returns dx by dt, and then we plug it into odint, and that gives us our uh, solutions. So let's write this function, so def x dt. So it's gonna take in x and t. And we're going to say that, so theta one numerical, u one numerical, theta2 numerical and u2 numerical are its inputs, x. And what it's going to return, it's going to return a list of four entries corresponding to dx dt. So the first one it's going to return is u1. So it's going to return um, d uh, theta1 dt numerical evaluated at u1. Um, one numerical. That's the first entry. The second entry is going to be du1 by dt, so this big expression. So it's going to take um, du1 uh, dt numerical evaluated at g m1 m2 l1 l2 theta1 theta. So I, I, I can just actually just copy this in there except for the thetas. So it's just going to do this and theta one is going to be theta one numerical, theta two numerical, and this is just u one and u two numerical, right? Because these are the derivatives of theta with respect to time. Numerical and u two numerical. There we go. And the third entry, so we can just copy this again because it's pretty much the same thing. Our third entry is going to be d theta two dt evaluated at u2 numerical and our fourth entry and our last one is just du2 dt numerical evaluated at these values so we can do this and before we continue we just have to tell what these constants are so we have to re rename them so we'll say that t equals self dot t um, g equals self dot g 
these are all need. Uh, so we do this, and now that we've got our dx by dt, we can plug it into odint to get our solution for the double pendulum. So we'll just call this solutions equals odint on dx dt. Y0 are just going to be self.cons. That, that's what I called it, right? Self.cons, yeah. T is going to be equal to T. And that's pretty much it. So remember, when we call this uh, solutions, we get a vector of theta1, theta1 dot, theta2, theta2 dot. So we have to say that angle 1 equals um, sols dot transpose 0, right? Because we want to access it using this index. And our angle 2, so theta2 is going to be sols dot transpose 2, right? Because sols dot transpose 1 is theta1 dot. And then what we need to do is we need to lambdify x and y because with x and y is how we're going to construct our animation for the pendulum. So we need to lambdify them and turn them into some Python functions. So let's do this. So we'll just say that x1 numerical, y1 numerical is just simpy dot lambdify. So it's going to be with l1 theta1, I think, x1, and the same thing for y1, little chunk. So l1 theta1, l1 theta1, sorry, y1. And then we have to do the same thing for x2 and y2. So we have to add the l2s. So x2 numerical, y2 numerical, l1, l2, l1, l2, x2, and y2. And we just probably want to um, put this beforehand because we've redefined what these symbols are. So to not get confused, we'll just put this in this place where we just lambdify. This is lambdify and this is solve numerically. There we go. And then we just return four things. We're going to return x1, y1, x2, and y2 evaluated at these different values. So we're going to return um, x1 evaluated at so uh, l1 and angle 1. So x1 numerical, sorry. l1 angle 1. We're going to return y1 numerical evaluated at l1 angle 1 and then we're going to return x2 l1 l2 angle 1 angle 2 did i include these before no they should be there somewhere so theta 2 theta 2 and x2 and we just need y2 now so let's copy paste y2 and now we return this and we'll just say that x1 y1 x2 y2 is just double pendulum dot sol. so oh forgot to add a comma over there so there we go i forgot another one cool so now we run this and let's see if it's worked no attribute self dot m1 oh i added an underscore and it shouldn't have been one so these can all go and then we just rerun this again and hopefully it's going to work I that again some typo i did somewhere d theta one d theta two let's try this again hopefully this should be the correct so it looks like it's running it's working to solve and there we go so it looks like it's solved our equations so to check if it's correct we can just do plt dot plot t and x1 let's do x2 to see and there we go and we see that we can already see that this is looking a bit more strange and remember this is because the double pendulum is a chaotic system so if we neglect the small angle approximation if we start it from a large angle which is what we've done because we've st we started it from um pi and the second one from pi over four so it's going to be like something like this the pendulum undergoes chaotic motion so it's very sensitive to initial condition so that looks correct to me so now the the final step is to pretty much um 
write a code that animates our pendulum. So I've just um, added this little code that animates the motion of the uh, double pendulum. It's exactly the same code than from my previous video. So we first create uh, a, a map public figure and we add an axis. Then we draw, so this is to draw the first line that goes from the origin to our first mass. So it starts at zero, x one, zero. These are the x coordinates of the line and its y coordinates are zero, y one, zero. Then we do the same thing for the second line, which starts at the center of the first mass and goes um, to the second mass. So it starts at x one, zero and y one, zero, and it ends at x two, zero and y two, zero. Then we create some, some circles. So we have the first circle that represents the first mass of center x one, zero, y one, zero, and our second circle. Then we set some limits on our plots. So we have enough space uh, to completely view the pendulum's motion. And then we create this animation function that at each frame updates our graph. So um, we chain, we, so we update our line. So it, uh, at each frame, it goes from one a time step to the next. And we do that for both lines. And we also update the center of our circles in this way. And then these are the number of frames we have in our image. This is uh, relating to the time step. Uh, and we just call animation and all these different arguments. And then we use again this HTML5 so we can render the display on the Jupyter Notebook. So now let me run this cell. And it takes a bit of time, but when it, once it's done, we'll see this really cool animation of our double pendulum swinging. So there we go. We get this really cool looking uh, animation of our pendulum swinging. And we kind of see its chaotic motion. It's it's very strange, it's not moving in a very regular way. And so yeah, that's pretty much it for this video, so uh, thanks a lot for watching.